Hey everyone, I wanted to show you quickly how you can go about making an oil painting in Photoshop. Now that we have a couple of options already in Photoshop that give you sort of an oil painting look and that's different. This is, this is going to be something where we actually make the strokes, uh, but you can go up here to filter, stylize, and then oil paint, and that will create an effect that is sort of an instant oil paint look. And it's not as customizable is what we're going to talk about today. But uh, if you're interested, the settings that I generally like for that are stylization, cleanliness, or cleanness, sorry, <laughs> scale, bristle detail, all the way over to 10, and then lighting all the way over to the left. So shine is at zero. Angle is negligible because we don't, or is, is not important because we don't have any on. And then I hit OK. And in this case, I can't do anything with it because I don't have it on a separate layer. It just is what it is. But if you're interested in, in using it on a duplicate layer, you can do that. So I'm just going to hit Command-Z uh, to take it off, Command-J to make a new one, filter, stylize, oil paint, and then it remembers the settings that you put in there so you don't have to redo it every time. This does make a huge difference though depending on how big your file is. These are huge files. So because it's a really big file, the effect is not that great. If it's on a small image like a cell phone picture, it's or a smaller picture, it's going to be really obvious. And when you zoom in here, and look at it uh, off and on. You can see that you see a lot of dirt and texture, and then when you use the oil paint, it smooths that all out. So I use that extensively, but we're not talking about that today. I just wanted to let you know in case you, um, whoops, you Google oil paint filter or something, and uh, that one comes up. All right, so let's talk about oil painting. So the first thing that we want to do is prep our image. So I'm going to make a, a duplicate layer here and go to filter, camera raw filter, and here is where I'm going to do a little bit of adjustment. Go up to the top, I'm going to increase contrast, vibrance a little bit, uh, just so we have something more concrete to work with. I'm going to go down to noise reduction just a little bit. This was taken later uh, after sunset when that golden glow happens uh, as the sun is gone, since the sun is gone and it leaves this, this orange glow behind. And then I'm going to use a little bit of a radial filter here uh, just to increase the exposure on the flower itself. And we're going to kind of rein it in so it's not spilling over too much, but just kind of brighten that up a little bit and hit OK. All right, so that gives us a, a better starting point, always pre-prep. I could go in here and remove this little flower that's peeking into the side of the frame. I could crop this, you know, all of that. And also mentioning uh, here that the interior of this flower is out of focus. The petals are in focus. It's just because I have really shallow depth of field. Um, when you start doing the painting stuff, not a huge deal. <laughs> we can we can work with uh, out of focus areas. It's just as well as in focus areas because we're sort of muddying it all up anyway. All right, so the first thing we want to do is go down here to the bottom right and add a, just a blank layer. And then we're going to turn off our bottom layer uh, just because we don't need it right now. And we're going to go to the layer right below it and lower that to 75% about. Reason being, we want the, uh, the, the photo to show, but we want to see some of the blank layer. If I have this up at 100%, it just looks like a photo. And we're going to be working on this blank layer here and we want it to show. We want to see what's happening on that layer. So lowering the opacity of this layer isn't going to affect the final image. It's just going to help us working through the process. All right, now we're going to need to use our mixer brush. And if you don't have a mixer brush, on here, I'll show you how to get it. Uh, it should be under the brush tool, but it's not there for me. So go down to this little three dot line here and right click on it, and then go down and find the mixer brush tool and then click on that. And that will activate it. Uh, it's supposed to be nested in with the brush and I think by default it is, but for some reason mine isn't. And this just brought it back forward. All right, and then we wanna go up here and deal with some of the settings at the top. Number one, we want a soft brush. 0% uh, hardness is really soft. 100% is really, really uh, crisp on the edge. We want somewhere in the middle, you know, so like 50% or 60, 70, somewhere in there in the middle, not super soft and not the hardest. So just kind of in the middle somewhere. 
And then uh, we want to go through and pick which settings we're going to do. This one, uh, if you mouse over it, let me see. If this one loads the brush after every stroke, that's going to drive you crazy. We don't want that one on. We want the one on where it, we want this one on, which taking forever to load. Uh, let me let's see if I can get the words to come up. Basically, this one cleans the brush. Every single stroke is going to be a brand new fresh brush stroke. And this is really important because um, the mixer brush by its very nature is going to mush everything together. And if it's constantly pulling from each stroke, then you're going to have things that start to blend too much and you're going to find yourself frustrated. This cleans the brush after every stroke so that wherever you put your brush down is that that's the color it's picking up and you can be a little bit more precise makes your life a little easier. Uh, then as far as the brushes go, there's a lot of different ones that you can try, you know, from dry all the way down to very heavy, wet mix. And you can just play with all of these. Uh, they have light and heavy mixes depending on how much paint it comes, you know, comes off the brush. Uh, but honestly, you can try any of these, but um, more often somewhere in the moist area, either moist, moist light mix or moist heavy mix, you know, give those a go just to try it to, to get going. Uh, and then as far as your brush goes, we already did that. Let me make sure I just, I have it really small here so I can see. Size of your brush matters. <laughs> uh, bigger brush is going to put down a lot and smaller brush is going to put down less. Let me see if I can get my brush to show here. You kind of see it's really faint. And we sort of want to work the brush in proportion to the uh, image. Now we want to go in here and, and there are some settings. These settings are determined by what you choose. So if I go into heavy, uh, it's going to be different than if I choose just the moist here. Uh, this one goes to 50% for the mix. I mean, these presets here determine what these settings are. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Then um, we don't want to do airbrush, uh, style, build up effects. You can play with that. Absolutely. Go ahead. We want to sample all layers. That's super, super important because what we're going to be doing essentially is working on this blank layer and it's going to be pulling the color from the layers underneath that are activated. In this case, we have a background layer, which was unedited, uh, the original uh, for uh, archiving purposes in case we save this as a PSD then we have that uh, available to us if in case we need to introduce anything from the original back into the, the file. Uh, this is the edited one and then this is the blank layer. So we're, we're sampling from this bottom layer here. Just so you know if you do this on a stack of layers you're going to run into trouble because it's going to be sampling all the layers but uh, you can get some interesting effects if you have, you know, uh, adjustment layers and things like that. So um, just keep in mind that you might want to flatten whatever you've done to a single layer, uh, just so that you kind of can keep track of where it's sampling from, because it's going to sample all layers. Uh, and there might be times when um, that can be confusing. If you're going to use a Wacom tablet, then go ahead and 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 click on pressure sensitivity there. I'm not right now. I'm just using my trackpad. I wouldn't recommend using your trackpad or mouse. It can be a little bit frustrating too. My Wacom tablet and pen are downstairs. Just to uh, my son is using them for his art uh, sometimes. So anyway. The thing about the Wacom tablet though, if you use a Wacom tablet and a pen, if you want to really go full throttle, invest in the art pen because the art pen has full rotation. And basically what that means, oops, and I've gone and started to, to draw here. Uh, the art pen from Wacom has full rotation, which means your brush strokes will sort of move in whatever direction your pen moves. And so it's very much more closely aligned to what a an actual brush would be versus uh, more of a digital rendition of a brush. It's just a little bit more organic feel and the response is different and it's expensive. It's $100 just for that pen, I think. So there is a standard pen that comes with the Wacom tablet that's fine. Uh, but if you want to upgrade, the art pen is highly recommended. So go in here and then you can start to paint and do your little thing. 
And if you're out here in the green, it's going to pick that up. You can you can make nice strokes anyway you start to paint and right there right here you can see how the lighter color of pink is blending with the darker color of pink like that there's maybe lighter over here and darker so you can see if you if you keep close to the picture itself the brush strokes start to reveal that detail and also you can see why having something sharply in focus isn't as big of a deal as you might think now notice if i go up from the dark to the orange it sort of pulls the dark up to the orange, but if I start with the orange and go down, it's gonna pull more of the orange in, okay? So it does matter which direction you go. A lot of people have styles that they have emerge with this type of art form. For instance, uh, someone might make their brush a little bit bigger and choose one of the brushes that are not uh, just a typical brush they might go down to you know some painterly brush effects that they have downloaded like this one is a painterly brush stroke and this is where the art rotation brush is super helpful um, when I use this brush that I just chose if I click on this do you see this it it does a little bit of randomness but the art brush gives you a lot more control over how you tap away and if I, st I stroke it this you know, it does its thing with more of a jagged edge. It can give you a better feel. Every brush is going to behave a little bit differently, okay? Um, every brush is going to have a different feel to it, uh, but the Art Rotation brush from Wacom or Wacom gives you a little bit more control over how that rotates. So you see that, can go in and grab another brush. I don't know, I don't even know what half of these are, uh, like that. Anyway, <laughs> you can go in and play uh, with soft to hard to painterly brushes to things you download from places like Brush Easy, which is a free place to get brushes from. Anyway, that is how it works. And then when you zoom back out, you see the picture. And I can go in here and just keep going. You can lower the opacity of the bottom layer to see exactly what it looks like without the picture present. And this can be time consuming. Obviously, you have to paint the whole thing and it can be a little bit time consuming. The bigger the brush, the more it lays down and the different, you know, different kind of effects that you get. Uh, there are some ones that you can get from Adobe, Kyle's. If you just Google Kyle's brushes, there are a lot of free ones that you can get. Here's Kyle's concept brush all purpose. What did I do? Did I hit the wrong? Oh, I'm on the wrong. How did that happen? Okay, this is how that happened. Let me explain. When I hit the Kyle's brush, it automatically made it go to the smudge tool. All right. Some brushes are, are intimately tied to different aspects of Photoshop. And in this case, that Kyle's brush was tied to the smudge tool. And I was like, why isn't this working? This is so weird. I don't understand. Um, so we need to go down here and, and, and find our mixer brush again and then use the brush with the mixer brush. So double check to see <laughs> which brush is activated. Uh, in this case, we're using uh, this painterly ma manual mixer brush. So double check that. That can be a problem. Uh, let me go up here, back to this soft round. You know, that gives a definite different look, a lot softer, more like an airbrush. Anyway, you can play. So this is this is the, the fun. You can just have at it. Uh, but again, if you grab a brush, do double check to see what it's grabbing <laughs> because you want to make sure you're on the mixer brush like that. Uh, and then continue on your merry way. So that is how you paint in here. And, and given time, it will be awesome. I actually prefer to use something like iColorama or even smudge painting in Procreate because I like to curl up when I do this with, with a pencil on an iPad. But if you're a person who really likes to use your computer or would prefer to use a Wacom tablet with a pen, uh, this is ideal for that kind of painting. Anyway, I will let you go. Thank you so much. I hope you have fun playing.